the surface, in the water, the water level. But what about the information about the deep? This is the question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. Um, well, the model actually, or the IREP algorithm, also takes into account the depth. Uh, I went rather quickly through it, but I offer you, through the coffee break, I can show you in detail how, how things work. But um, what you would do is that you would overlay in the, in the tool, you would overlay a sheet chart, and then you would extract uh, the depth curves, uh, you would model those, and then uh, from AIS, uh, we have the uh, draft information of the ships, um, and we use that to match uh, the uh, the vessels with the uh, the depth uh, in the in the channel, and we calculate as a result a number of groundings. There are two types of groundings: um, power groundings uh, and drifting groundings. Well, there is also an issue of uh, the frequency of blackouts in, ship, in ships, and um, so, uh, it is a 3D model for you. Come and see it. Yes. Yes. Thank you, uh, Pernilla. Um, let me first of all congratulate you with the high quality of uh, your speakers, uh, with your own, uh, well, timekeeping uh, skills. Uh, <laughs> so sorry for that. Um, I promised, uh, unfortunately, possibly, I promised Case Glasdorp not to raise any questions. Uh, for him, I had some chances to do that in the European context. I believe it. But we'll leave it with that uh, for the time being, at least. So, but I had a question or at least a comment to, uh, to Dr. Debo. Thank you very much for your interesting presentation. Uh, well, I, I recognized a lot. We did a lot of thinking, exercising in the Netherlands as well on how to measure the, the impact uh, also in monetary and budgetary terms of, of our safety measures uh, in general. Uh, and of course we, we have made our own uh, graphs with uh, uh, the real world, the real number of groundings against targets. What interested me though in your graph was that the real number of groundings was set against targets, but the targets seem to differ every year. So is, is that really in the US you have a new target every year? And if so, how do you, on what basis do you set a new target? Is that on political grounds or is that also on more, well, rational grounds? We put it that way. Thank you. I think I just finished the exercise this year. I have to forecast six years out. But the reality is, is I, if once we publish our targets, if the targets are the two years ahead, the target I published this year, uh, can, I can't change it. So I can only forecast two years ahead. And so we have different target set, setting methodologies. And so I know the shift that you saw up there on the, on the top was when I started to do it. Um, and I was trying to account for that increase in uh, trade and volume of uh, maritime trade that had been going on with the, the boom period, as uh, Sir Jeremy had uh, talked about in his presentation yesterday. But we have some latitude in how we set the targets, and I, I did use a different approach this year. to be involved in both groups, for the IREP and also the MANIS group. So, uh, having two hats, not that beautiful as Terry used this morning. But um, what I see is that both of these approaches uh, have their advantages. So, the IREP has a beautiful system to structure the traffic, to set the distributions and much more others. And the Mars even had some operational uh, aspects now taken into consideration, and some more aspects considered uh, even for the flag of the vessel than others. So that's and, the, and moreover the consequences. So 
there are a lot of uh, good ideas. And my question is, would it be a nice idea to bring all these things together in not one project, but at least to take advantage of both uh, to the sake of uh, IALA members? Do you want to marry me? <laughs> Yes, I think so. I think actually that it would be a good idea. I have uh, myself looked into uh, the demonish uh, approach and I, I fell in love with it immediately. <laughs> so um, I think that would be a good idea. This, this might be a, a future project for uh, our, our little group. Um, what do you think? Yes or no? Just a general question for the whole panel, really. Um, do you think there's a place for a simulation to validate some of these models once the calculations are complete? Yes. ships uh, into, a, into, into a, a region and they will try to make their way as a kind of an autonom, autonomous uh, agent. Uh, that type of simulation I think is uh, exciting. But uh, later tonight I guess some of our uh, delegates will be going to a simulation center and we will get a story from, from there. <laughs> But I'm sure that simulation is uh, also a part of the future, indeed. Thank you, Omar. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening, and thank you for not falling asleep. Uh, I have one more thing before we end this session, and that's from the Secretariat. Please check your penguin holes for the uh, agendas for the General Assembly, which is the next session. And Omar will also want to tell you that he will be here up front during the coffee break. So if you want to know more about IRA, we will be happy to tell you. And now we are breaking up for some coffee. No? Yeah. Once again. Do you think I remember that? Once again about the technical two. The bus will leave at 17.20 outside where the bus was leaving yesterday. So don't forget. And um, as I said, we are now breaking for coffee and we meet here again at 15.30. Okay, thank you.